everyone, it's Lisa from I Dreaming So. Welcome to my channel. Now for today's so I'm going to do something a little bit different. This isn't a brand new swirl or anything. Well, I guess it is sort of, but what it is, it's taking techniques that probably a lot of us have done before and just doing them in a slightly different way. Now, what I've done with my mould, first of all, now this is actually a tall and skinny mould that I've got from Nurture Soap and I love it. But for the design that I've got planned, what I want to do is I want to cut my bars so that the bar actually runs this way through the soap. So can you see, I'm not sure how well you can see on my mould, I've cut how wide or I've marked how wide I want my bars. I've just done that with some biro on my silicone and that'll wipe straight off when I finish. So I will be cutting my bar width like that but then I'll be cutting across the middle. And what I've done is I've just added in some of that sort of Corex plastic stuff that you get. So I've cut that nice and tight so it will fit the mould. Now why I've done that is because this mould will just give me bars that are a little bit too wide for what I need if I literally just cut them straight down the middle and the bars will be just too big and chunky. So I've just added a couple of strips of that in there just to take the mould to the actual dimensions that I want it to be and then it's going to be perfect for my needs. Okay, so there's my mould prepared. Now for my additions today, I'm using white cashmere from Scent Pathique and I love this fragrance. Now you've possibly, depending if you've seen my videos before, have seen me use this fragrance before in other assessments, but I'm just doing a slightly different colour scheme with it today. So I will be getting this assessed and taking measurements of everything I'm using and then I'll get it assessed after I've actually made this soap. So I'm not specifically trying to stick to a prescribed assessment that I've got at the moment. So white cashmere, and then color wise, some good old titanium dioxide, and then just two other colors, antique silver and red riot. And both of those are from Micah Mama in the UK. Okay, so let's just get this very gently mixed. I'm going to need to do a little bit of mucking around with measuring out, splitting this off and doing my colourants. So I am just going to literally get it very, very lightly mixed, just so I know my oils and lye are combined together. I'm probably not even going to worry about getting to an emulsion because my fragrance oil does accelerate a little bit. I've got a few bubbles tiny weeny bubbles on the top there so if you do see those give them a little bit of a stir and then you can get rid of those first rather than just turning on your stick blender and blending them in and spreading them around okay so that's better Okay, so at this point, I'm happy that I'm blended. I'm not emulsified yet. I just want to get this mixed together. Now, I'm sure I've said this in the past, but I'll just repeat it now in case you haven't seen other videos. Normally, you want to at least take your batter to an emulsion, and that's the point where the oils and, li and lye won't split apart again. If you are going to just blend so they're not at emulsion because you want to keep a really thin trace, you need to make sure it is at emulsion before you pour it because once you've poured it into your mould, you can't stir it again and mix those things together. So it needs to be at at least emulsion, ideally a trace, before you pour it. And also, anytime you take a batch and you split it out, before you split it, you have to stir it. Because again, anytime you leave it sitting alone, we haven't joined 
the lye and the oils together yet. They're sort of next to each other. They haven't started holding hands or anything yet. So at this point, they're still minging around, maybe looking for other people um, to grab hold of. They haven't chosen their mate yet. So we need to keep mixing them together and not let them split out into their own separate little groups. Okay, so let me get this split out. Okay, so I've predispersed the amounts of mica that I want for the colours that I need into my individual little jugs and I've worked out for my design how much soap I need for each of those colours so I'm just going to split that out And then when I am splitting specific amounts out, I will still weigh my last bit. I won't just presume that's correct. So just as a final little check, I'll just weigh that last amount, take off the weight that I know the jug is, and I can just check that that's going to give me what I need. Yeah. So I can see at this stage I haven't made any silly little mistakes and I'm going to suddenly discover them later when I can't do anything about them. Okay, so this white is going to be my titanium or oh, sorry this pot is going to be my titanium dioxide so I've measured out in here the amount of titanium dioxide I use just get these others mixed up. Now I may still want to play with these colours a little bit. Okay so I've got my main colours and I've weighed the micas that I've used in there. I now just want to muck around and just lighten these pinks a little bit because this is almost sort of bordering on quite a bold, not quite a neon pink but it's getting quite bold isn't it? So I definitely want quite a pastel pink and then a not quite so dark pink. So I am just going to add in little bits of TD. I've weighed my TD bottle so I can tell how much titanium dioxide I'm using. So I just want to take the edge off that boldness of the pink and then this one I'm going to just lighten a little bit more, just to make sure they're distinct from each other. Okay, so I think I'm happy with those. And all the while that we're mucking around with our colours and giving them stirs every now and again, because we're changing things, then that's just helping to make sure we push them through to that full emulsification. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave those just for a little while, not very long at all and then I'm going to come back and stir them and then we're going to start with our pour. Okay so while you were gone, all right while I had the video turned off, uh, rather than you watching me split all this out because I'm sure weighing stuff isn't very exciting, I've split it out into what I need. My first layer is going to be a white and a light pink layer. My second layer is going to be a white and a light or grey colour. So I want the white carrying through. And then my third layer is, as you can see, so I'm going keeping the grey in and a little bit of white and then bringing in this darker pink. So I'm just going to put all these other ones aside. And start with these. Now at the moment I'm still not quite at a trace but this fragrance oil does move not super fast but it does move 
you know, it doesn't decelerate your trace. So I am going to add it in and then get it poured as soon as it starts to touch that trace. So I'm going to get these poured into my long spouted jug because I kind of want to do a thin lines design. So just pouring gently down the side of your jug. Try not to rush this. The faster you pour your batter in, the more likely it is to sort of, the suction of it grabs the batter from the other side and pulls it towards, you know, the wrong side as it were. So nice and slow. Okay, and I can see as I'm starting to pour this in, I am coming to a nice trace. So that's gonna be good for me to pour. Now clearly I'm taking a bit of a risk here. Um, anyone who's ever encountered meat soap, you know, I'm sure lots of you, if you're soap makers, have possibly made your own meat soap. So a little bit risky. Pouring pink and white together is a bit of a recipe for aiming up with some meat soap, but I've got other colors coming in later on. So hopefully the meatiness of it won't be a problem. Okay, so I'm doing a thin lines design, so I want to stick my mould on an angle. And what I'm going to do is, the bit with the plastic in, I'm just going to pop that down at the bottom. It's in there pretty tight, but I really don't want to take the risk that it's going to drop down and plop on top of my soap. So that's how I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to do a thin lines design. So essentially, I'm going to try and do this. You may not be able to see into the mould, but hopefully you can just see what I'm doing. Just literally going through and just running your jug back and forward. And the key thing is to make sure it pours down the side of your mould. Now, the faster you go, the thinner your lines will be. The slower you go, the slightly fatter they will be. And obviously, depending on the thickness of your batter as well, that will give you different types of lines. Now, my batter's still really thin, and that's okay. Try not to have it too super thin, because you're likely then that things may just mix together. but I'm just a little bit worried with this one. I don't want it to all thicken up and then not be able to pour very well. Okay, so there's our first lot done. <laughs> Looking a bit meaty. <laughs> Right, so I'm now going to add in my next row. So let's just get, what did I want? I wanted some more white and I wanted my grey. Tick tock, the clock is ticking. I don't know what I should do and I wish you would be right here with me. My mind is filled with pictures of when we used to dance but now I So bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see. I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late. Okay, so there's my row, and hopefully, you can start to see the stripes now coming in there. Now, I'm a bit further up the mold. Okay, then, last layer. Now, because I've gone white pink, then white grey, I now want to do the pink grey so it's darker at the top, but I do want them to still sort of all have the same sort of theme going through as it were. So I'm just going to carry a little bit of white through that as well. 
Okay, so my last little bits of, of batter. Okay, so how I'm going to get my third colour in is I want sort of more of the white towards the early pour of it and then just listening off. So I'm just going to add a third stripe in there. Now it's quite likely that I'm going to have to take this off the thing, <laughs> precise term there, but we'll get to that when we need to. Okay. I think I can put it down, it's getting quite heavy. And then I can just finish this off, always down the side that you were pouring already. out those bars and then what I've also done is made myself a little hanger tool now this is just some garden wire the sort of stuff you try shrubs back with I've used this before when I've needed a hanger tool for a mold that my proper hanger tool doesn't fit if you're ever worried about something like this see this is coated with a type of plastic what I always do is I chop a bit of it off and I stick it in some strong lye solution and I leave it there for 24 hours. I then take it out and then I wipe it on a paper towel. And you'll see if this is degraded at all. There might be some colour that will come off the towel or this will look pitted. I did that for this and there was not a change in it at all. So clearly it's resistant to the lye. Now I want a reasonable thickness and my wire's not that thick, so again, all I got was a little plastic tube. You could use like a, a bit of a pen or something. And I just cut that to the width of my mould. Okay, so I'm just going to hang up <laughs> the opposite way to what people normally hang up. So I'm just going to go down and wiggle it through. And then along. So the next one I'm going to go wiggling up. So I'm just sort of trying to create a look, sort of a bit like, I guess, a tornado or a hurricane. It's not actually but going to look like that, but, you know, that's sort of the idea of the swirl. To take all of these lines and drag them through each other. And with that last one, we're just going to come up right at the edge. Okay. So there's everything done. Tap that down again, and let's just tidy up that top. You just bring in those extra bits and pieces that I couldn't get scraped out.
So there's our little swirled soap and we'll be interested to see what that looks like when we cut it tomorrow. So that's uh, normal. I don't bother with rubbing alcohol on my soaps. I find it makes no difference at all for me with soda ash. I know some people swear by it. So whatever works for you, try it with, try it without. If you do use rubbing alcohol and you still get soda ash, try it without. See if you get any more soda ash. You know, if it's not making a difference, then stop wasting your money and squirting it on. Okay, so for me, it makes no difference at all. So I don't bother with it at all. But I do seal my mould up. So I do have a lid and I keep some extra cling wrap on it. As you can see, I just reuse this bit. Just to give it an extra bit of a seal. And for me, that stretched over the heat of the oven when I see pop it then gets that to sort of suction on nicely and then I will just pop that in the oven as a normal um, low temperature in the oven 170 F 70 degrees C turn the oven off as the soap goes in if you've got a chilly house maybe pop the oven light on and then just leave it there overnight so here we are with our soap the next day. I've, as you can see, just unmolded it. And I'm just gonna cut it. Remember we're cutting it in a special way to get the size bars we want. So first of all, I'm gonna cut each of these bits into the width of the bar that I want. Okay, so you can see what it looks like from the side. Okay, so for each one of these, this is now going to be turned and I'm going to slice it in the middle to make my two bars of soap for each one. Okay, so let's get those chopped down the centre. Okay, so there's our little swirly sort of, I know, tornado-y, hurricane type design. And we will have some of them with the design sort of going up through the soap because remember I went up one way and down the other and some of them will have the design going down through the soap. There we are, there's our last ones. I think I'm gonna <laughs> sort of call it a tornado swirl or something. Could call it a hurricane, I think it's already a hurricane swirl, but anything, something like that will be cool. And then I'll just leave you with some final pictures of the soap. Thanks for watching this video everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? And if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!